Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, welcome to our show, everybody. We're back. Yay! Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. This is Las Vegas, Nevada Cannabis News, Weekend Cannabis News, and we're back on the air. After a little hiatus of about a year, uh, we're back, guys. So Happy to we- be back. <laughs> yes, it's been a while. Very happy. Definitely. Well, I'd like to start out by thanking everybody that came to our Halloween party. We had like 250 people there, and it was amazing. Yeah, Outrageous well. turnout. Fire. Definitely. I'd like to thank the Jameson family, Las Vegas Relief, Michael Jameson, Red Dragon Brothers, um, <coughs> Nature's Kindest. Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association. Coconut in the Clue. Coconut in the Clue. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Also, Cushed Out Clothing. Who else was there? All of our volunteers. Oh, all of our volunteers, especially when I thank all of our volunteers. Yeah, without you guys, we couldn't make these things happen. Definitely. So we have just set the bar for Halloween parties now very, very, very high. And, uh, you know, we like to be very, very, very high. I I think you just said it best uh, (laughs) at the party, Jen. Our only problem next year is going to be how how are we going to top this one? So exactly. We have a whole year to work it out. I've already got a few ideas how to make the next one even better. So. Definitely, definitely. The dab bar was just amazing. There were so many slabs out there that it was just, it was outrageous. Uh, Nature's Kindest also bought or brought a, uh, what was that machine? The com- the, oh, the rosin press. Oh, the rosin press. Did you guys get any stuff pressed? No, no. I watched their work and it was pretty incredible to, to have this little machine that um, any uh, patient can bring their uh, bud and be able to turn that into a concentrate um, and it's uh, not really a concentrate it's just uh, some of the essential oil that is uh, left over in the uh, paper that uh, I think that's uh, just a new incredible way for for people to be able to access their medicine it like squishes the oil out yeah, of it. squish perfectly safe unlike blasting butane or BHO it's just is used the, heat and pressure nothing is this else kind of like a, a uh, supersized version of what you see on YouTube with a hair straightener and some parchment paper and you just kind of squeeze it real hard? Is this a you know, an industrial version of that, basically? Absolutely. Absolutely, I think. Yeah, and I've, I've, uh, I've experienced in the past, before July 1st, the uh, hair straightener, and uh, <laughs> um, unfortunately, the hair straightener, when you step on it, it's, it's not too happy after a period no, of time. <laughs> no doubt. I uh, broke one myself experimenting, yes. just giving it a try. Mm-hmm. It, it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, we also had a uh, cannabis tea there, uh, and it, that five and a half gallons went boom, just like that. Yeah, that was delicious. What about the mobile tester? Oh, who, that who, was who incredible. That? that was the Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool toy. That was about $23,000 worth of machinery, and you put about a gram of, of medication right on the little reader, and then it, and then it reads the THC. Didn't it, did it do the terpene pl- profiles no. or the, no. just no. the cannabinoids? I thought, cannabinoids? I was aware of. I thought it was just the THC and THCA. And, and, and CBD. CBD. And CBD. That's okay. it. And, and uh, you know, cool. props to Kurt. He got the highest in the group at 34.3. 34.3, yeah. THC, Bud? yes. Yeah. That's outrageous. On, on my critical. On, on my his critical, critical kush. kush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just a few years ago, that's that's what it, it was. was it was uh, the first test right after they Are you sure you didn't sprinkle a little Keith in there? Yeah. No, yeah, positive. <laughs> cheater. <laughs> absolutely not. Positive. And you know what? And he grows all organically, no nutrients, n- uh, nothing uh, artificial in, in the you know in in growing the plant so yeah, and only a couple plants at a time so they get lots and lots of love so so that that's a secret to thc is love right <laughs> well i just think this is going to start a whole new era of how we grade cannabis in a judging platform at these lo- future competitions and things like that now that we have a definite way to do it on site if we you know if the science is proven and all that and mm-hmm. the numbers are accurate which i would assume they are um there is no more guesswork in it everyone has always said oh well you know mine's the best mine's this well now we actually have definitive science to to back it up and say mine is 
proven to be the best. There's no question anymore. Well, yeah. You know, it's not a matter of opinion or how many friends you brought to vote for you. I mean, yeah, the, the, right? the, the, I think the one misconception out there is that because you have a high THC strain that this is better than a low THC strain and, and just the whole cannabinoid profile beyond just the CBD, the THC, the CBN, um, also CBG, the terpenes too as well. I don't think that's not, I don't think that's getting enough attention out there that the total profile for the cannabis and some people just use that THC as, as their judgment of this is the number one or best cannabis. Of course, it just seems like a disproportionate amount of growers in not only the medical but the recreational field are going almost solely for high THC content in order because that's just what the market dictates. That's mm -hmm. why the OG strains, I believe, have uh, come to dominate the market here in the past decade or so. It's just because they flower fast and they have really, really high THC contents. And you know, we could go into why you know, sat you know, it's harder to find sativas due to similar reasons, but you know, it, well, in the couch lock, the couch lock doesn't even come from the THC or the CBD. It actually comes from it actually comes from myrcene. They've proven if you have a, a sativa strain that has myrcene in it, you will get knocked the heck out. Yep, and that's what that's why the uh, the nine pound hammer uh, from uh, Green Life Products is selling so well yeah. because Las it, Vegas it, Relief. Yeah, Las and, Vegas Relief. Really? Yeah, they're running. Are and they still running well. their specials on that right now? Uh, yeah, forty dollars for an eighth at Las Vegas Relief. Uh, yep. They oh. had to just come in and mention the uh, $40 uh, eighth special for nine pound hammer and uh, it's flying off the shelf. So get on down there. There you go, guys. You heard it here. Go down to Las Vegas relief and ask for $40 ace of nine pound hammer. Right on. All right, you guys uh, on the phone, we actually have somebody from Ohio. Um, if you guys didn't uh, don't know or didn't know today, they are voting on a bill that has both legalization and medical use for cannabis and we have an activist on the phone that actually works in ohio and has been working on this campaign teresa are you with us i am hi there how you doing we're doing great we're back on the air and and you're our first guest wonderful well first i'd like to correct you i would like to okay. let you know that i am not with responsible ohio i do not work with that campaign okay <laughs> is, 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 is responsible Ohio, is that the issue three? Is that um, what responsible Ohio is? That is. Responsible Ohio is issue three, yes. It can, is you the, um, can you explain a little bit what issue three and issue two are? Absolutely. Issue three is um, a monopolistic approach to medical cannabis. It creates 10 grows, and those grows parcels are actually in the amendment to the Constitution. Oh, so basically um, it's going to be really hard to undo it. As a constitutional, constitutional amendment, yes, absolutely. In order to uh, adapt the business model, we will have to have another constitutional amendment to do that. Now, issue two was put on the ballot by our legislature after they recognized what Responsible Ohio was doing. Uh, what, it, what it is, is my background is I was an executive director of a political action committee in 2011 to get it on the ballot. So I do have first-hand knowledge of writing amendments in the state of Ohio. And the specs, for lack of a better word, for an amendment uh, uh, in the state of Ohio are very, very easy. The summary has to match the ballot language. You have to get a 1,000 signatures. The OAG's only job is to make sure that summary matches that ballot language. And then you get the required signatures, and then it gets on the ballot. Wow. When I was the executive director of the political action committee, I would say, wow. In other words, I could write in a ballot language, Teresa gets free cannabis at every store. And as long as that summary says Teresa gets free cannabis at every store, and we get the signatures, if that passes, that means I get free cannabis at every store. Woohoo! I found that to be, I know, I thought about it, <laughs> obviously, a couple times. But honestly for future generations and, and looking at the ethical nature of that, um, really working with people with integrity are going to be really important. What these guys have done is they have, uh, they also discovered this, and they put actual parcels, numbers, in the amendment to the Constitution. So basically and, you know, they, they can have these big grows or, or whatever it is on these parcels that belong to certain people, and then once it's voted for, these people have a monopoly because the law says that their land is the what's used to grow cannabis? 
and process. And process it. And process it, even the oils. Mm. And again, we don't know who these people are. There's a couple of people whose faces have been allowed to be used. For example, the 98-degree uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jessica's ex-husband's ex-husband. <laughs> yep. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, his name is a fake. Hey, his face is out there. There's a couple of other players. Are we going to have a marijuana of the sea strain out there? Is that is that in the works? I've, I've heard. Uh, some, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've heard some prominent Ohioans' families are uh, involved. Also, I heard William Taft's great grandchildren are deeply involved in one of the grows, as well as some other potential political figures. Um, it's. <laughs> It's disappointing that it seems to have been going that way. Um, what about the competing, the competing measure um, is, issue too? What, what, what's the story with that? I hear that they can both be passed potentially at the same time, and then they will be they will be conflicting effects, and which will cause it to go to court immediately, or which one goes into effect first, or will neither of them go into effect if they both get voted on? Like, how how does that work? Well, right now, in order to understand what issue two is, I, I think I really should explain it a little bit to you. Thank you. What the legislatures did is they put together um, another amendment and they put it on the ballot very quickly. And this amendment requires any uh, other amendment that is going to change the tax code for individuals. Um, and that there was one other stipulation. I have to apologize. I don't exactly remember what it is right now, but it's something similar to that. What will have to happen with the amendment process if somebody wants to change the tax code, whether it's for individuals or for corporations, this will have to go in front of the ballot board in the future. If the ballot board agrees to it, then it can go to the ballot. So what it really does is it stops anybody from coming in and writing Teresa gets free cannabis at every store. <laughs> it so it really, kind of vets it. It, it. it changes it. Mm -hmm. so, so if, it if two and three pass, is that is that what you're looking for out there right now? Well, you know, not me, so personally, I'd rather not say where I'm at. I just had to resign from an organization that represents 60 families with catastrophically ill children. Mm -hmm. So it's my preference not to say where I stand on this issue at this point. Um, but, you know, by the way I talk, I think you could probably figure it out. Sure. Um, but what I will say, if both pass what our current administration, the Secretary of State says, is that the issue two will be implemented because that's implemented immediately. Issue three would have until the first of the year. So they would look at which is first implemented. Today, I heard experts speaking about whether one gets more votes than the other. What it really comes down to is this is going to the Supreme Court no matter what. We want to find out first off, can you really go in and write yourself a monopoly for medicine for uh, the disabled that are defined in Section 4112 of the Ohio Revised Code under the Civil Rights Commission. Can somebody actually just come in and, and write an amendment for the disabled and say, hey, I'm now going to be taking care of all their medicine? We don't know. So where Whether does this leave the patients, Teresa? Oh, it, it, this is absolutely a horrific situation for the patients in the state of Ohio. It's terrible. Um, the poor families with the 60 families with the catastrophically ill children, they've done a phenomenal job at staying away from this. They've stayed away. They have put their heads down. They worked very hard at educating our Republican administration. They did a phenomenal job at educating. Our Republican administration fully has a phenomenal grasp and concept now of cannabis concentrates, um, a phenomenal grasp of the regulatory systems of other states. So I'm very proud of these families. But our administration has not acted. They have not done anything. So what we've done here is we've put our patients in the state in just a horrific position. You know, this is, ex this is exactly I really what like I was afraid this. of. This is actually what I was really afraid of because um, they lumped in recreational with uh, with medicinal in, in this. And is this the same thing that we're talking about? that they've they lumped recreational in with medicinal on this. And so if it doesn't pass, then then medicinal doesn't pass. Absolutely. And the reason that I have such a major issue with that was because the language, prior to the language getting turned in, I believe that these individuals spoke to national reform. Um, I know they spoke with our uh, nonprofit, and all of us begged for them to do a medical amendment. Instead, this is how they, this is what they came up with. Um, so our medical patients are the ones who they're holding out front. You have 
desperate people who need medicine. Now, when you really look at the ballot language, that's what you really have to go back to. And look at that ballot language. There is no guarantees in that language. They even have to do medicinal. There's no guarantees. Wow. Um, and there's, there's a good know, chance they won't because we back. hear that a lot when they say, well, what do we need to do medical for or when right. we just legalized it? I believe yeah. in what in Oregon they're trying. They've been trying to unwind it yeah. for a while now. Which is totally wrong. I believe personally that we should have both and that the rec- the recreational or adult use side, the taxes generated from that should be used to support the medical program so that the patients aren't pulling three, four hundred dollars a month out of their pocket for med- medicine that they need to survive. Well, I do know that Minnesota right now, which is a similar business model, you know, uh, which is, you know, just a couple grows. I think patients are getting charged twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month. Which wow. is absolutely absurd. This is the plant. Put a couple more seeds in the ground. So the, obviously that business model that uh, Responsible Ohio is proposing has never been proven. Would issue, three, would issue three let uh, patients grow if, if it passes? Or, or so would again, just... So when I, honestly, when I asked the, the author, I asked who his grow advisor was, he didn't have one. What this will do is it will allow people to go and get a license there's no guarantee for this by the way there's no guarantee it doesn't say shall happen so there's no guarantee in the language it says may happen but they right? propose yeah the, well the, that the commission has to do this but they propose that each individual in the state of ohio can have four plants okay but they're only allowed to have eight ounces oh my oh so, that yeah. math doesn't work well yeah it's, it's kind of like the math we have here in nevada where we're allowed 12 plants and two and a half ounces Every 14 days. Yeah, every time you harvest your plant, you're automatically illegal. That's if you're a good grower. Definitely a problem. Well, Even if you're a bad yeah, grower, it, it's it's a problem. You know, I heard a uh, um, an argument from someone from a responsible Ohio on television today, and they were kind of attacking this person. They're like, "Oh, you set up this monopoly," and they weren't denying it. They're basically like, they basically said, "Look, you know, we've spent 25 million dollars." putting this campaign together and we were the ones who funded it and this money didn't come from nowhere so basically that's capitalism and that was well, that's it so you know what would you say to them well number one i would say why didn't you listen to national drug policy reform again when i started in this in 2011 2012 it has been Teresa. go to your legislature have a funded lobbying effort with the legislature your legislature is very friendly to medical cannabis and after working with it for the last year, I absolutely agree to it. I think they're absolutely friendly to this. Um, number one. Number two, we don't know who the real people are who are funding this campaign. No transparency. We do know. There's no transparency. We, not that I'm making any accusations, but there are heroin dealers out there. There's a company called Monsanto out there. There's also CBD scammers. Oh. I repeat yeah. that again. There are CBD scammers out there. Sure. We don't know who is behind this. And if the people are not going to be transparent so that we all know what kind of medicine is going to be made and provided for sick and dying, our most catastrophically ill, vulnerable patients. Are there any requirements for laboratory wrong. testing? Excuse me? Are there any requirements for laboratory testing on the medicine? Uh, there's no requirements. Now, at this point, they have not only set up 10 grows. That's great for the growers. They set up four labs. So, wow. and, you know, so the labs, one of the labs, is in Athens, but there's no grow anywhere near it. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to grow and then ship every other product to Athens to be tested. And Athens is in the southern part of Ohio, so the southern west, I'm sorry, the southern east part of Ohio. The grows are very far away. I mean, again, the entire business model is absolutely, I believe, problematic. Do you believe that there um, will be trickle down trouble? Let's say this ballot, let's say it passes, it gets implemented. We saw potential issues with our local uh, regulatory board, like the county commission, city councils, things like that, that were hesitant to allow product being produced in other parts of the state to be imported to Clark County. They wanted the local growers to be represented in this, that, and the other, and there was a big, a big dust up about that. Would you uh, see any trouble with that? Maybe like, you know, the Cuyahoga County people don't want, you know, people from the other counties bringing their stuff in, and vice versa. If there's beef between those, like, you know, this sounds like, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of friction, and it could cause a lot of, a lot of potential trouble. Would you anticipate any of that, or has that been dealt with in the ballot language, or was that even not addressed also? Well, I haven't heard it that way addressed, uh, and thank you for saying a uh, big dust up when you're dealing with Las Vegas. Ohio is an agricultural state, 
you can't go from one state, one end of the state to the other without traveling through hundreds of miles of farms. No farmers are involved in this industry. There's wow. no, again, let me repeat Why? that. We have cut off all of the Ohio farmers, all of those great, not oh, great Ohio breeders, which I'm going to say flat out. We have great Ohio breeders out here. Meigs County Gold. We have some great cannabis. All of those breeders have all been cut out of this industry. Well, what about the farmers who were not growing cannabis, the farmers who were doing like you know, industrial corn crops and things like that? Have they shown any interest or have they been shunned out of the industry due to the fact that they might receive federal subsidies from the farm bills? It might be je- jeopardizing that. I'm not exactly sure what the politics are surrounding that out there, but has that been touched on at all? The farmers are not very happy that they're being cut completely out of the industry. They're absolutely, mm-hmm. I mean, they're angry. And please remember, again, this whole bill, li- this whole amendment language was a choice. It didn't even choose. They didn't even choose to put hemp in the bill. In so, the language. so if, if issue three, so, if issue three did pass, mm-hmm. couldn't your legislature make changes to it, open it up to uh, more people instead of the 10 sites that that issue three is? Or is it locked into the 10 sites or some of those other things that, um, you know, with regards to issue three, can they, you know, expand and. Um, change certain things. Rework it? Yeah, rework it. They are unable to rework a lot of it. What they did is is the responsible Ohio people put one part in that in four years, if there's not enough cannabis being grown, then they can, then the commission can have additional licensing for growing. But it does not have any type of language such as merit-based application process. It just says that licensing can be open in four years for more people to grow cannabis. Not shall be, but can be, if. Can Maybe. if. Yeah, if the, I don't think if they the they 10 shall. friends I have they want to. go back, but I don't, I mean, I, again, we are also looking at, in the state of, conservative state of Ohio, we're looking at 1,200 stores. All 1,200 stores mm-hmm. have to buy from those 10 grows. Yeah, that's, oh. that's what I thought was crazy. They could have a one dispensary per, what, like 1,000 people? And so that would be 1150 for the state of Ohio, buying from 10 growers. And we must also remember that in no way, shape, or form in that amendment does it say merit-based application process. I have never heard those words out of the executive director for Responsible Ohio's mouth. I've never heard him say the dispensary licenses are going to be given out through a merit-based application process. Hey, can we have a, me and Perry can have a kiosk in the mall with our dispensary kiosk uh, in all the malls in Ohio? Is that possible, Perry? You think? I, I, I'm for it, absolutely. Yeah. This is, I, I, how the hell did they get away with this? <laughs> well, they got away with it, just like Teresa was saying, because if if the bill language meets it's the... It's not like meet, here in Nevada. Yeah, if the bill language meets their like little synopsis of what they of what what's going on, then it's accepted. And then if you get a thousand signatures, it's just wow, like that. we're part time and, and that's just it and again you know i go back over to i don't know how long you guys have been around but i'm the founder of the right based language in the state of ohio which just created rights for the disabled created rights for the industry to exist created rights for a distribution processing growing uh created a commission to oversee it in order to give out fair and transparent licensing for the state that was the rights based language it's completely the opposite to the free market language and to see that some people have come into our state again, you know, I, I'm trying not to bash too much here because, um, you know, it, it's very disheartening to see this happening. And now to see on the last couple days that we last couple days the push into getting this done. Ian James, the executive director of Responsible Ohio, made mm-hmm. a major announcement that drug cartels have threatened his life, <laughs> and the same day he started putting families of catastrophically ill children on TV and in the paper and all over the state. Now, how irresponsible is that of him, that he's saying drug cartels are threatening him, and then he's going to start using the faces of children that that have have five or six hundred seizures (laughs) a day? The drug cartel thing could have waited a week. Well, not not for sensationalism, and I'm, I thank you for saying irresponsible because I was because after hearing this, I was thinking irresponsible, you know. Absolutely, it's just and unethical. And you have you know he ha- he announced also that he's used one hundred fifty thousand dollars of funders' money. I you know I said I went right to the families because again I resigned because I had people using my first and last name 
and I had to get out of there for the safety of my children. I wanted to find out if those families have all made sure that they signed some type of a contract with him, that he's going to be using some of that $6 million that he's making to protect their families if their families get threatened. I don't know if you heard me correctly. But yes, I did say that his company is going to make $6 million passing this amendment. Wow. Wow. And, and, you know, and he's putting the children in and very sick people right out there, their faces out there on the front lines for this battle while he's being threatened by cartels. He, that is irresponsible, Ohio. And we don't know who's funding the campaign because he's not telling us. He just has a couple of people out there whose faces well, are out there. I would assume there. that the Marijuana Policy Project is putting in El Chapo. A significant <laughs> El Chapo. <laughs> Hell. That's what people want to think. But, uh, you know, I, I would assume that, you know, MPP is probably putting in a lot of money. I would assume Drug Policy Alliance has probably put in money. And I would assume they probably don't want people to know about it. The same reason why they didn't want people to know about it when they were passing the Alaska uh, recreational and, uh, ballot initiative recently. They were, how do I put this? The Alaskans were very nervous about having outsiders coming in and telling them how to do business. And I would assume Ohio people from Ohio, Ohioans, are kind of protectionist also. They don't want outsiders coming in telling them their business. And if this whole big marijuana thing gets out, I would assume that would sour a lot of the more conservative voters out there that are going out there today. So, you know, I would, I would say that they probably kept as low of a profile as possible. Well, I have to also say that, you know, it, because I was doing what I was doing at the level that I was, I do communicate with the leadership of both of those organizations and i can tell you that there are some big players in mpp from ohio and i'm not going to say too much but i don't think that they're real keen to what's happening here hmm. okay. when it comes to ethan nadelman i know that he at they asked that organization to review the language prior to their submission mm -hmm. and again they were told to a medical do a medical <laughs> so dpa recommended a uh, recommended a medical and they just were like nah nah kick rocks yeah and exact NPP did, and it's my understanding. Well, I know it's a fact. At the beginning of a responsible Ohio, they started to say NPP reviewed our language, DPA reviewed our language. Well, they said well, reviewed and, and the language that very quickly. You no longer hear responsible Ohio saying anything about DPA or NPP. Well, they're saying they reviewed the language. They're not saying they approved the language. Right. Which is, you it know, absolutely got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Teresa, thank you for calling in from Ohio on this on this day. Um, you know, I'll be talking to you tomorrow about about what's going on in your state and what's happened. When do the polls close in Ohio? Oh, I think they close about seven thirty. Seven thirty. A couple hours. So a couple hours. You know, yeah, and I'd like to just throw one more thing at you sure. and the audience because I think this is very important. And my recommendation to our uh, executive branch and legislative branch, I've really stressed one thing. We have 24 medical cannabis states, and not one state has focused on educating our healthcare professionals prior to passage, during passage, or after passage. These are the most well-educated people in our society. Physicians go to, to school for, you know, how many years in order to become a physician, and then you're asking them to, to recommend a, quote, illegal drug to their patients. I find this to be very problematic, and it's my recommendation for every state to absolutely focus on getting your healthcare professionals educated in the endocannabinoid system so that they can make um, common sense, intelligent decisions when recommending this medicine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you know, regardless of the conflicting language potential and whatever is going on out there, I'm going to be keeping my fingers crossed for you guys out there, seriously. You know, every battle won is a, a battle toward ultimate victory. So, you know, thank you for all the work Not you put everyone, in. Not everyone, because unfortunately, <laughs> I have to say that these same people have already announced that they want to bring that business, the same business model, to Florida, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I heard something about Arizona. <clears throat> Ian James has announced very loudly that they want to go and bring this same business model across the country, especially mm -hmm. the states that have ballot initiatives. Wow. So, Okay. We all need to remain, uh, in my opinion, diligent on making sure that we keep our patients in the forefront and not allow corporate cannabis to come in and take over and, and regulate it to the point where our patients can't even get the medicine that they need. Well, on, that, on that note, will you be voting yes on ballot two or three? She, oh, yeah. Um, well, she, won't, she won't say. Well, again, you, you won't say. No, she won't say. Yeah, won't say. Yeah. Okay. Very, very ill. Okay. I'd rather not say. Okay. But know that today I was on the phone with the Ohio Attorney General's office. I was on the phone with another leadership, and I have not stopped that legislative approach 
that Drug Policy Alliance and Marijuana Policy Project has advised the state of Ohio right. for the last three years. All right. So. Thank you, Teresa. Thank, thank you again. All right, you guys, we're gonna go on, you guys, we're going to go on break right now. We're going to go on a short break with some PCAs, and we'll be back talking about uh, Bernie Sanders, liver cancer, and uh, Nevada's tribe is going to build a, what, a cultivation and production facility. marijuana facility. All right, we'll be right back. Thank Smoke you. Break. Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the Weekend Radio Team. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we just had a lively discussion about uh, Responsible Ohio with Teresa Daniello, uh, an Ohio activist. And now we're going to move on to Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders made. Uh, made the Washington Post by saying, in the United States, we have 2.2 million people in jail today, more than any other country. And we're spending about $80 billion a year to lock people up. We need a major change in our criminal justice system, including changes in the drug laws. He said this at George Mason University in Virginia. Currently, he is the only the only candidate that is talking about cannabis. So if you are a one-issue voter... Bernie's the only game in town. It's very, very true. Um, he was, I guess, brave enough to come out and take a real stand for the issue during the first uh, Democratic debate that was recently televised. You know, everyone else is just kind of giving their roundabout questions, and and they just directly asked him, you know, would you would you vote yes for the upcoming legalization ballot initiative in Nevada? And he said, I probably would, which is a pretty good. I mean. W- that's the answer we're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's like, oh, I don't know if I would, or, you know, I would consider doing this or that or the other. But Typical he's just politics. Like, yeah, exactly. But he's just. Hillary coming basically out and saying said. It. Hillary well, she danced, said. She danced it. She did. She said, I want to see how uh, laws in legalization and recreational use in Colorado, Washington, and other states work before supporting federal changes on how marijuana is classified. Well, we weren't asking you know, her about federal legislation. We were asking how she would vote in a Nevada ballot initiative. Oh, so. you know, did I, did I, <laughs> all around the issue. Got to walk the line. Yeah, that's for sure. So basically, uh, Bernie Sanders is the only game in town for if, if you are a one-issue voter. Uh, does anybody else have anything to say about uh, about Bernie Sanders? Because you know what? 58% of Americans support legalization of, of cannabis. I wish that uh, some of my Republican colleagues would take a little bit harder look at the poll numbers from some of their various districts and on the national level before they start demonizing medical and recreational cannabis so quickly. The issue has evolved so rapidly that uh, I would hope that I don't want to say in order to remain relevant with a younger demographic, but in order to, I guess, honor what Republicanism to me is supposed to be all about, which is doing your own thing and smaller government and letting states choose for themselves and, you know, all of those fundamental uh, conservative platforms, I wish that they would actually hold to them instead of if you live in a Republican state and your populace or your legislature decides to pass this bill that you as an authority figure will decide to not implement that law or do what you can to undercut the uh, integrity religion into of it. that law or Push something like that. Yeah. And that's not what it's supposed to be about for me. It's supposed to be about the will of the people. And if the people want it, then the people should be allowed to have it until they decide that it's not for them, at which point they can choose to undo it once again. But it's not up to one person to decide whether or not they hold sway for thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds, or potentially millions of people well, there's in more the su- states. There's more support for medical uh, marijuana than even the uh, um, each individual um, politician even polls um, at either. Oh, absolutely. Well. But, you know, there's a, uh, how, how do I put this? There's an old stigmatization, you know, the old, oh, you know, if you smoke dope, you're not going to be able to get anything done in this world, and it's bad for product- productivity, and uh, it's just bad. It's just, uh, we hate the dope, and we hate the dopers, and uh, I'm not going to change my mind, and, you know, some of these guys, they fought in Vietnam, and, Those you know, they have... Vote. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, some of them do. If, well, if dopers, dopers voted more, president. we would have. If dopers voted more, we would have been way further along, you know, by now. Uh, and that's the sad truth of it. Um, and I wish that uh, I, I, I wish that it wasn't so. But it just is what it is. Are so. any of the Republican candidates even talking about this issue? 
in a negative light, absolutely. Um, oh, well. I heard Ohio Governor John Kasich come out when they asked him very briefly about it in Colorado, and he dismissed it very, very quickly and started talking about something else. And he's like, "Oh, that basically, what his uh, his attitude was is that's not important." Well, you know, it's important in Colorado where they were having yeah. the debate, and it's important to millions and millions of Americans. And you're running on a national platform just because it might not be important in Ohio, which of course it is, Actually, as it's being it voted on today. Mm-hmm. You know, I was disappointed to see that the one chance they had to address that in a recreational state on television was so easily dismissed. Um, Rand Paul has been, I guess, notorious for being wishy-washily, flip-floppingly supportive of cannabis here and there when it's convenient for him. It's definitely not his dad. But uh, no, he is definitely not Ron, um, for good and the bad, I suppose. Um, There are really no Republican candidates in the field that I that I'm aware of that are that are for it. Uh, ben Carson is a medical doctor, and he very disappointingly has come out against it. Uh, what about re- Donald Trump? Regardless of the efficacy, he stays quiet on it. He hasn't mm-hmm. said much. Uh, Donald Trump's a businessman. I think if he saw money in it, he'd jump on it in a heartbeat. And I think that's about as far as he wants to go with it. I don't think he wants. Yeah, to I read really somewhere that he was the, supportive of medical marijuana. I believe once yeah. again, you know, he's a capitalist. I, I mm-hmm. believe he is probably at heart, but it goes against kind of the Republican Party line. Uh, no, it doesn't. It goes against the the religious right uh, yeah, one, that's the but whole not thing. the Republican. If you look, if you look at the party and what they represent, well, it really doesn't. What they're cannabis. supposed to represent. Well, oh, yeah. actually, there was just a poll that just came out. As you said, that fifty five percent of uh, registered voters in the U S. want to end probation. This just came out prohibition. yesterday. Prohibition. This just came out yesterday. A majority support for legalization exists among men and women polled and extends across all age groups except for those over 65 years old. 63% of Democrats and 59% of independents surveyed support legalization, while only 42% of Republicans are on mm-hmm. board. Well, wow, and, th- and this is from several large, uh, large polling companies like Pew, uh, CBS News, and Gallup. Those I are yeah. Gallup's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I trust that. Good. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. So we're going to move on, mm-hmm. actually, to liver cancer. Um, th- there's a study finding that cannabinoids have an anti-tumoral effect against HCC. HCC is known as hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma is the cancer that you get from, um, I would think, syntax is the best way to say it it's from alcoholism it's from you know fatty uh eating a lot of fat foods high fat foods alcohol autoimmune disease uh, of the liver hepatitis b and c and they're finding that cannabinoids are actually um helping with the hepatocellular carcinoma and this this hcc is the cancer that people most people get 58% 58% or no, no, 75% of all liver cancers are HCC. Oh, wow. And so it, it's showing once again that if you drink and you smoke cannabis, it's actually kind of a protectant for your liver. Cannabinoids, that's so broadly based. They didn't really specify, you know, no, where it's actually, coming from. They're just like cannabinoids in general are, are these uh, proactive. This, it's a new report published by pubmed.gov and it demonstrates that cannabinoids from the marijuana plant could provide a new uh, treatment of choice for those suffering from one of today's deadlier forms of liver cancer and the study's abstract states the present study is aimed to investigate the the effects of cannabinoids as a novel therapeutic uh, targeting HCC uh, by us- utilizing synthetic cannabinoids on damaged cell lines, the scientists discovered that even man-made cannabinoids inhibit growth of HCC, mm-hmm. leading to a healthier liver and cell cycle arrest. So it stops the cancer, and it also helps regenerate or just well, there, uh, give a healthier liver. You can make synthetic THC, from what I've heard. Is it possible to make uh, synthetic CBD um, or some of the other cannabinoids of, of cannabis that, that either of you have heard about? I have never heard of them making uh, of them making synthetic um Sure, you it's know. possible. It just CBD. hasn't been tried yet. I'm, I'm they sure haven't found a reason to. They're maybe. probably working on it. They just haven't done it yet. Well, our uh, wonderful producer has just enlightened me with a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of knowledge trailing back to our previous story about Bernie Sanders. We were talking about how did Donald Trump feel about marijuana legalization since he's so popular in the polls these days. Well, in 1990, he came out with a statement that 
said that he wanted to legalize all drugs. He said, we're losing the war on drugs. We're losing bad. You know, that classic Trump tone of sure. his. We need to change it. But now, in 2015, he was asked again. And he said, look, you know, I don't think I would legalize marijuana if it was up to me. They have a lot of problems going on in Colorado, et cetera, so on and so forth. And then he went on to say, though, but if the people vote for it, they vote for it. And then kind of did his little shoulder yeah. shrug thing. And that was it. So... You know, he didn't really go too much into it, but... Uh, so he's so going to idea. the will of the people. Well, <laughs> I would hope that he, in that statement, would take more of a uh, Senator Mark Hutchinson approach during the 2013 legislative session where he himself had really no interest in supporting our medical marijuana bill, but his constituents did. I want remember. It, and he was gracious enough to bless us with his vote and support and co-sponsorship of the bill. I remember, yeah. So, you know... I, I remember that, and I would I would hope that he would take uh, he would just take that. I I, take I don't know how line. else to put it. Yeah, take the same line. You know, do your job. <laughs> right on. So we'll see. All right, you guys. What else are we going to talk about? Well, well, we could talk a little bit about big business in marijuana. So Willie Nelson. Um, there there was an article um, in the New York Times recently that said that uh, Willie Nelson didn't know whatever about uh, marijuana. And uh, w one of the articles uh, also said, too, that uh, – so Willie Nelson said, we're trying to monopolize it all. That's horseshit. It, that ain't right, and we'll do everything we can to keep that from happening. Um, so he loathes big uh, marijuana. But he, at the same time, he's licensing his name uh, for marijuana pro uh, products out there. So you have um, right. you know, the Bob Marley family that's – that's uh, connected to uh, privateer holdings. Yep. Um, you have um, other um, Cheech and Chong and other um, individuals uh, trying to uh, even uh, Jimi Hendrix too as well. Purple Haze uh, Holdings. Yeah, yeah, that that is uh, there's they're trying just trying to capitalize on marijuana, and um, you know what do you guys think about that? What do you think about big big marijuana and brand, people branding? I have no problem with anybody that wants to try to establish a Dixie Elixir brand out there and, and get it on on the nas national level. That you can go to Colorado, you can go to another state, and you can expect the same consistency between products, just like Chiba Chews, um, just like some of the other products that we see in other markets. Incredible Edibles, um, Pob uh, Escondido's company too, as well. That you would see this consistency between products, between markets, and and I, I have uh, no problem with that, you know, whatsoever. Well, you you just hit the nail on the head, though. Willie Nelson says that he loathes big marijuana and big, you know, big corporate, um, you know, dealings and stuff like that, and yet he's lining up to do just the same thing. Well, with he's his two name. sides of the same coin. This is yeah. that's <laughs> what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Is that is that um, for the longest time, Bob Marley's family said no. No, we don't want to have anything to do with that because I think it was like one sister that kind of controlled uh, the brand. Uh, since that time, actually, um, they are going forward. Lamb's Breath is coming on the market yeah, pretty soon. They're mm -hmm. going forward with their brand. Mm -hmm. They had the same battle with the Jimi Hendrix properties. Uh, For years. Yeah, the, only the one brother was on board and the rest of the family wasn't. Yeah, and Leon wanted yeah, it. And <laughs> Leon, Leon and them, they, did, they just finally fought all their battles and they got it push through to where they can do it um it's it's it, i mean it's it's america i mean that's what it's this is what we're yeah. about it's free market i mean i have no problem with somebody developing a brand as long as they're creating a quality medicine and they're not gouging people you and know what i mean i mean seriously and having good business practices you know yeah, what if, more can i say if, if if you can create a quality medicine and keep it constant there's absolutely no reason it shouldn't be so how, how long have people been pushing celebrity endorsements for decades? Mm -hmm. There's nothing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's nothing new. It's nothing novel. It just seems, no I mean, <laughs> how many celebrities do we know that have their own alcohol brands? Snoop has his own alcohol. Uh, E-40 has his own alcohol. I mean, does I can point to dozens and dozens of individuals who Did have he? tried to enter. Sure, of course, who have tried to enter numerous markets. It's just this is the newest one. This one, I think, just <coughs> will be more profitable than the others. It's just really as simple as that. I mean, you know, everyone thinks it's this big taboo issue, but, you know, uh, I, I point to the similarities between cannabis and gaming a lot, and I think people continue to ignore it. You know, back before 1955, there was no gaming control board in Nevada. Every t uh, gaming town was crooked, and you could just kind of do what you wanted. And uh, 
people look back at these pioneers that were in back in the day and they don't go, oh, those were just uh, old, you know, those were criminals and bad guys. Those were the pioneers of the great industry that we hold so dear in this state today. And no one, you know, those were our heroes. And basically. what do you usually say, Perry? Pioneers get shot, settlers get the money? Pioneers get killed, settlers get the land. That's how it goes. Wow. Uh, yeah, we hope. Yeah, we hope that that's not going to be happening here. Well, most of the pioneers have already been shot, killed here. Yeah, sure. Back in the day, back mm -hmm. in 08, 2010, yeah. etc. We saw all those pioneers. You know, the happiness consultant, completely legal. All those people. You know, there were no parades for them. That was just the Jolly end of the Green story. Meds. Jolly, Jolly Green, Green oh, Meds. Dozens and dozens of dispensary uh, dispensaries got shut down. We remember. Mm -hmm. And now here we are, a few years later, and the settlers are getting the money. Are getting the land exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you guys ever been too high? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I got I got a report out of Ohio. <laughs> Speaking of Ohio. <laughs> yeah, it just happened not, this month. Not since I can remember. <laughs> I know, right? We try time. every day. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> Here we go. This, this is a... Uh, this goes way beyond the munchies. An Ohio <laughs> man told a dispatcher no, that he was too high on marijuana. When officers revived, arrived at his... Austin Town home to find him on the floor in a fetal position amid a plethora of Doritos and other junk food, according to the police report <laughs> obtained by the Huffington Post. An officer said the 22-year-old, whose identity was redact redacted from the report, could be heard groaning in an upstairs room. The officer then found him amid the junk food, which was also included Petridge Farms goldfish, Chips Ahoy cookies. The Are you sure you didn't get this from the onion? <laughs> nope, this is from the <laughs> Huffington Post. <laughs> the man told the officer he could not feel his hands because he smoked too much weed. The report noted. Then he then he then sent the officer to his car where he had allegedly allegedly smoked the pot, and the cop recovered a glass pipe, rolling papers, roaches, and a glass jar of marijuana. He de he declined <coughs> medical treatment. The report said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been. You know. Well, it might have been all the junk food, too. I think the moral yeah. of the story is that uh, <laughs> we activists and advocates get in the bad habit of thinking that cannabis is for everyone. We think it is this wonderful thing. Everyone should try it. It's going to fix, you know, heal the world and all this kind of stuff. And it very, mel very may well do that. But it definitely is not for the everyone. gateway to Doritos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people just don't know how to handle. Maybe they shouldn't yeah. do it. Maybe probably shouldn't have done it alone. Was his first, or your maybe first yeah, yeah. And if he's in, inexperienced, yeah. maybe start slow. We pitch that all the time, especially with the edibles here. You know. Oh, absolutely. You know? Those yeah. are dangerous, my yeah. friend. Yeah, start slow. You know, a little bit at a time until you know what your body can take. Well, and I guess with the dosaging we have in Nevada, you can't get in too much trouble here. But if you go to California, I've seen brownies that have over a thousand milligrams of THC in one brownie, and if you don't know what that is, oh my. The Corova Black Bars, they're, yeah. they're quite vicious. So if you don't know what you're doing and you just go to a shop for the first time and buy yourself a, a brownie and eat the whole damn thing, you're going to find yourself in, in more trouble than you were looking for. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think I was one time. Somebody, somebody said, hey, do you want to try this? And I said, what is it? And they said, it's a dab. And they said, well, are you experienced in getting, in, you know, in medicating? And I said, yeah, I'm pretty experienced. And then I got DTFO. Yeah, I, I had And if you don't experience. know what that means, I sweated. I couldn't get up. I vomited. Uh, I, I felt like, oh, my gosh, I can't breathe. But you know what? You know what the joy of this is? You get over it. You know, yeah, it's, it's not going to kill you. No LD50. No, what? LD, there's no LD50 for cannabis. I mean, you'd have oh, to yeah. you have to smoke two and a half pounds in 15 minutes to, to be able to uh, die from cannabis well, even consumption. Even with the concentrated you dosages we have available uh, today, yeah. I don't yeah. think it's you possible. You can give it a try. And can, then you, you wouldn't be good. dying from the cannabis. You'd be dying from the lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any kills. other relevant stories here? Oh, uh, Nevada Tribe is going to build a medical marijuana facility up That's in northern one. Nevada. Yeah, the Piatt and the Shoshone Tribe of Nevada in Oregon uh, will be building a medical marijuana facility. I hope the DEA, the federal government, uh, leaves them alone and allows them their economic opportunities that they absolutely deserve. Um, As a sovereign nation. This is in mm -hmm. Fort McDermott. Uh, this is the Fort McDermott Paiute, not uh, our Nevada, Southern Nevada Paiute tribe here. And that's about, what, about 40 or 50 miles from the Oregon border. I'm sure they have some friends down here that they'll let them know how it goes, though. Of course. I'm sure it's a test run, no doubt. All right, you guys. This is the end of our first uh, show back on the air. And I'd like to thank you guys 
uh, for all tu- uh, tuning in. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Inyo Fine Cannabis and Nevada Pure. Um, and stay tuned for the next show on Do we want to say their locations, VANR? too, where we can yeah, find them, both of them? Absolutely. Oh, well, In You'll Find Cannabis is number two Maryland Parkway, right yeah, at Maryland, Maryland Sahara. Sahara. Maryland Sahara mm-hmm. on, the, oh, Sahara on like the north side, or, or the south side of Sahara on the north side of the shopping center they're in. And uh, We'd also like to thank uh, Las Vegas Relief um, for... We're sponsoring our Halloween party. Uh, yes. They were very gracious. You guys go in and visit our sponsors and tell them that you heard it on the Weekend Nevada Cannabis News show. And please, please, please use responsibly. I'd yeah. also like to thank uh, Vegas All Night Radio for allowing us to come back and and bring our message whoop, back whoop, to the whoop, back whoop. to the city. Here it means. Yep. Uh, it really does mean a lot to be back at home. It was in the same studio we had the pleasure of doing business with last time. We are more than grateful for the opportunity, and we're just hoping to continue this relationship into the future and continue to build bridges, and we That's just right. cannot sing their praises enough. Yep. So. And one more sponsor, Dr. Reefer. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for your card, go into Dr. Reefer and ask for the weekend special pricing, and you'll get in and out the door for $280. That's $120 Total. savings. So yeah, and, uh, make yeah. sure you call them and ask for the weekend special pricing. A continued, continued supporter of ours. We love Dr. We were, we were down down this whole time. We didn't have our radio show. They were continued to be supporters of us. They they always have our back. Mm-hmm. We will, you know, we'll never stop supporting them. Thank you guys so much for everything, all That's of you. That's right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, once again, I guess... Uh, I mean, we're out of material. We covered the we covered all the bases, and thank I you think all we for did. coming out. And right. I we're guess, done. Uh, we're, we'll, yeah, see we're we'll see you next week. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.